Hi, thank you so much for having me. How did I get started in acting? Uh, when I was three years old, I told my mom when I was seeing a play that she brought me to see, I said, I can do that. Please help me get to get on TV. Please help me get into theater. So I started taking dance classes and I did some voice work doing dubbing for a film called If You Could See What I Hear and I dubbed all the little girl baby voice. Um, who or what inspired you to go into acting and who are your biggest influences? Well, I think I just loved to play and I loved the imagination, I loved being fabulous and going into different characters, trying hats on and costumes and makeup and talking in different voices of course. Um, my biggest influences, I don't know, I just, I just believe in being yourself really, I mean, let's see, what was your first live action role and what was it like doing that role? Live action, um, well, when I was five I was on a commercial, when I was... 11, I was on a TV show and I played the lead character and that was fun because you get so much, you know, nice attention. They pick you up and bring you to set and give you your own dressing room and you get paid to try on costumes and um, I played a runaway girl and when I was um, 13, I think I played another runaway when I was 14. Uh, that was on Neon Rider when I was 14 I started that show called Northwood that was a CBC uh, teenage drama um, and I was busy every summer for four years the whole time of high school every summer I would be on set uh, I played a skateboarder girl I got to hire one of my friends who was a skateboarder a girl to be my stunt double so we would hang out during the summer and I was able to buy my own VW van yeah, it was great being an actress, um, doing live action for some of my first parts. What was your favorite live action series acting in? Oh, well, the, um, the main one I did as a series was Northwood. And then I guess I enjoyed being on X-Files. That was pretty cool. Uh, it was kind of a creepy show, but it was exciting because it was so popular. Going into the voice acting side of things, what got you interested in voice acting? Well, I already started. That was one of the first things I did, so I already had part of those credits on my resume. I think my agent sent me possible auditions and I got those parts so then it was just uh, the ball started rolling and I started getting known as a voice actress and then started getting more and more parts and um, doing the Bulma Dragon Ball Z for many years was fun and playing Madison on Card Captors, doing Shadow Cat Kitty Pride on X-Men Evolution that was really fun because uh, it was a prelay series and the animators even put my name, Maggie Blue, on one of the street signs in one of the scenes, and that was cool. I already talked about what was your first voiceover role, I think. Well, that was when I was little in that film doing dubbing. First voiceover actual character role. Um, might have been some on Barbie, or uh, definitely Sweetheart on My Little Pony. My Little Pony Tales. I was sweetheart for a few years on that show. The white horse with the pink hearts on her bottom for her cutie mark. You are known as the voice of Tomoyo or Madison from Card Captors. What was it like playing that character and being in the series? Well, Madison and that whole show was really fun. Uh, we recorded it at Ocean Sound, I do believe, in Kitsilano, Vancouver, BC. 
and the show was very creative and I, I'm interested in tarot cards and magic so I found that show quite creative and playful and interesting how every episode they would have to go out and find one of the cards and return it back to the deck so all that wizardry and magic was interesting and I also enjoy making short films and have a video camera and like to edit and write and direct so that was fun I felt connected to that character it's been confirmed quite recently the new card captor series card captor Sakura clear card oh. well hello just a minute where was I um, would you want to see yourself come back and voice Madison or has there been discussion with you and the other actors on returning to the series you would know more than I. Uh, I have not been contacted. I'm with the same agent, so if the same people are doing this, producing this project years later, they'd be able to find me. And sure, I would do that part. That would be fun. And then, looks like... Oh, uh, the next question. You've also played in other anime, such as Saber Marionette as Lime, Inuyasha... My Little Pony. Aha, uh -huh, yes. What was it like playing in those series and what was your favorite series to work on? Well, over the years, it has been fun doing all those different roles. Um, you know, each show is different, so each show has different humor and styles of writing. The Western ones, more like X-Men, Evolution, My Little Pony Tales, Barbie, those kind of shows have more of a Western humor and timing, which, uh, you know, I'm from the west coast, of west coast of Canada and Vancouver, B.C., so that type of humor I can relate to more. And then the Saber Marionette and Yuyasha Mega Man, Ronin Warriors, all of those shows, it was a whole other world. So uh, I learned a lot about Japanese culture. They have a different type of humor, different comedic timing. So that was more of a learning curve for me, but it was fun to jump into something exciting and brand new. You're also best known as Kitty Pride Shadow Cat from X Men Evolution. How did you get the role, and what was it like being part of the X Men world? Well, I just auditioned and did a few callbacks, I think, and then got the job. Um, yeah, it was really cool. Um, it was so fun every new episode getting called into the sound studio and having a huge sound room with all the different actors. We would each have our own mic and music stand and we'd all be in there at the same time and usually do a reading of the whole piece together and then go in scene by scene and everyone's really talented and funny and funny senses of humor so we'd all be laughing together it was great it felt nice to be part of the team was I familiar with X-Men or Marvel before getting the role well, on my father's side, Simon and Schuster, uh, on the Schuster, my father's real name is, last name is Shushan, and on his side of the family, um, his uncle wrote Superman, so I'm already technically related to uh, some superhero blood, I would think. So yes, I'd heard of X-Men and Marvel Comics before. The X-Men has been adapted for live action since 2000. We hope to see you. Oh, thank you. That'd be super cool. I'm actually playing a villain on a new show. And I want it on this in the newest ninth season. So when this ninth season of the new show comes out, I can uh, tell everybody who I am the villain voice of. What was the reason behind the series getting cancelled and were you aware of it taking place before it happened? No, you never know. It's always up higher with the producers and it was with um, you know Warner Brothers and everything so it's not up to us and we never get told. We just, we finished the fourth season 
and then that was it. It was confirmed they had this that the series had gone into season five and beyond. It would have explored other X Men stories and characters, the Dark Phoenix saga. Do you think there's a chance for a revival? Well, that would be sweet. It's fun to do action superhero shows. You're also best known as the voice of Bulma from the Ocean Group version of the Dragon Ball series. How'd you get that role, and what was it like playing one of the most well-known anime franchises of all times? Vegeta! Yeah, that was fun. I did that for quite a few episodes. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of screaming, and my voice would get really raspy by the end of it all. And that was some of the earlier shows I did quite a few years ago. Um, it's all done by just getting an audition and going in and meeting the producers usually or just recording the audition. They send it to the people who are casting and you get the job if you're this talented and the right voice that they're looking for. And because of doing all of these voices, for 2014 and 2015 I was brought to the London Anime and Cosplay Conventions and flown from where I was living in Hong Kong and then living in Vancouver they brought me there to London for the last two summers in a row. It was super fun. Did you ever watch the Funimation version or get to meet any of the actors from Funimation? No, I didn't. There was a recent episode of the new Dragon Ball series where Brian Drummond, I work with him on this new show I'm working on, uh, the voice of Vegeta from the Ocean Studios and Chris Sabat, which had fans freaking out. Will you hope to see you or any of the actors appear on Dragon Ball Super, like Brian Drummond and Kirby Morrow, later down the line? Well, both Brian and Kirby and I, we work on that new show that I play the new villain. I can't say exactly, but maybe you know. They're both on the show, and so am I now. Uh, so yeah, we work together quite often here in Vancouver with lots of different shows. Um, it said on your Wikipedia page you moved to Hong Kong and lived there until 2015 where you came back. I fell in love with the theater director and we lived and made multimedia theater for 10 years. What was the experience living there compared to Canada, and what inspired you to come back? Well, yes, we created multimedia theater. We were in many different arts festivals, performing beautiful, original, innovative, finely crafted puppet shows and mask theater, physical theater, dance theater, making animation and films. It was a beautiful experience, and we had a child together, and uh, now he is becoming more famous as a filmmaker in Hong Kong and my daughter and I decided to enjoy Canada life. So we have sometimes we're in Hong Kong and mostly in Vancouver and I'm with a new man now uh, and we're all getting along splendidly. As an actress what was the most challenging role to play in live action or voiceover? Well um, probably I had to play a I had to play a deaf girl on a TV show called Talking to Heaven, so I had to learn all my lines in sign language. That was the most challenging. And Stephen Gyllenhaal was the director, and that was interesting working with him. What What's one character or series you've always wanted to play? Well, how about Catwoman? That would be pretty cool. What has been the one role that has resonated with you the most and feel like you could relate to? What has been the one role that has resonated with you the most and you feel like you could relate to that person? Has maybe the characters I've done? Oh, let's say Madison, working with the video cameras and magic. If you ever wanted to see a crossover between two characters or shows you've worked on, what would that be? Oh, let's say, uh, a blue-haired kitty pride. Um, having played in both live-action animation, what has been your view on where the animation industry stands in the whole of the entertainment industry? Whoa, it's a big question. 
Well, uh, I'd like it if there wasn't always a bad guy and if there wasn't so much evil stories and dark spider black goo. It'd be great if we could just have, uh, you know, children's shows be children's shows, I think. Um, if you could change one thing about the entertainment industry, what would that be? Well, that's probably what I would say is um, get more evil and fear and darkness out of the picture, less control, less greed, and let's have um, more interesting, original, innovative storytelling, stories that are inspiring, stories that are empowering, stories that are rising us up, revolutionary ideas new imaginative groundbreaking thinking uh without spoilers what's next for maggie blue hair for the fans to know about well yes like i said um coming up in the ninth season of a show that you all know i will be a new villain who likes to ride motorcycles Final question, what do you think Bulma would say if she was in Australia? Mm. Oh, Vegeta, come on, get me some of that kangaroo down under on the Barbie, please. Come on. Huh? Uh, oh, whoa, that's a huge piece of barbecue. Woo. Oh, I'm going to need your help, Vegeta. Maggie Blue Hair, thank you so much. It's been an honor. And anything you would like to say to the fans in Australia and the world? Hey, keep believing in yourself. Stand tall. Stand bright. Speak your truth. Believe in yourself. No, or else nobody else will. Stand up. Shine your light. Be brave. And let's be kind and gentle with each other. Namaste. Aloha.